I feel like some people like look at how many like pages of notes I have and they're like, it's a, it's a three pager. We're going to be here a long time. One pager. No one pager today. But I'm going to extend it out. <laughs> Boom. Hey, uh, welcome to Covenant Life. Um, man, I'm just excited. There's, there's a lot of new faces and that's so cool. It's so cool to... Um, I'm just glad that you're here to worship with us today and hear the message of the word today, meet some great people today. And I always, I always tell people like, if nothing else, when you come to church or when you come to the meeting place to be with the church, if nothing else, you get to meet a lot of great people that are just trying to live for Jesus just like you. And you can partner up and take Jesus into the businesses, into the everywhere. Amen. Amen. So if nothing else, look, you didn't come to just be alone. I mean, you came to, to use your gifts and talents to serve each other. You came to meet some people today. And if you didn't eat, if you don't meet anybody, just raise your hand. I will force a meeting between two people, right? Amen. I'm excited. Um, so we're going to jump into a recap. Okay. How many guys like recaps? Recap. Recap. And a lot of you, you're off the hook if you're new, because, uh, if you weren't here last week, then you're like, well, I have no idea. I have no clue. So we talked about um, there are 11 Hebrew words uh, for praise. And we kind of took the main seven and we were looking at how we praise God. We looked at like, what is the, the Hebrew words that talk about how we praise God? And then I invited you, as I will today, to participate in doing those. Right? I know. <laughs> Not yet. Save it. All right. But I do want to point something out because a lot of people might come in and they go, hey, man, Pastor John, what's going on over here? And uh, the way that we worship and praise God is so beautiful. And it's so exciting that God would allow us to use every single one of our gifts and talents to glorify him. Amen. And aren't you glad that there's people that are using their gifts for the Lord and that we can see like everything used for, for the Lord. Artwork can be used for the Lord. Amen. Comedy could be used for the Lord. Amen. Rap music could be used for the Lord. Amen. Rock music can be used for the Lord. Sure. Ballet can be, uh, can be used for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Salsa. I just went. <laughs> so when you see this artwork, I just want to tell you what it is because people, you know, Katie, where's Katie at? I mean, she probably doesn't like that I'm even doing this, but Katie uses her artwork to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. And I know that her heart is that when you see these, that you join in with her of just like, God, you are so good. Like, that's what these are for. When you see these, I mean, come on, Amen. praise the Lord Amen. for this. I use break dancing for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. So we're going to we'll just recap. And uh, also, if you see all the kids, what we do is the first Sunday of the month is called Family Sunday. And listen, I, I have four kids. And uh, I understand when your kid has that one day where it's like, just sit here and be quiet and don't embarrass me. Please. This is Olive Garden. It's fancy. You know? And you come to church and you're like... You probably had a pep talk, especially if you're new. You're like, listen, <laughs> don't embarrass me. But listen, family first Sunday, we know that the toddlers are going to be kind of crazy. So there is actually a room right over here. And that is like kind of our family style room. If your kid gets a little excited, we'll say, um, they can go in there and uh, you can, you know, I, I'm working on, you can watch service right now on your phone, but I'm working on getting like the cool technology so that it's playing in there live for you. Amen. So um, just know that family Sunday, because listen, it's God first, family second, yeah. right? And then, and then others. And so it's so beautiful because we also want uh, uh, to pour into our kids. Amy and Luke do such a good job with our children. They provide some binders for your kids to learn about Jesus through coloring and stuff. And um, so I'm excited. So the kids are going to participate with us and we actually have a really cool thing. So you're going to see artwork being used to worship God. And you're also at the end of service today going to see a dance. Amen. Not me. Not me. Don't tempt me though. 
uh, not me, but uh, some kids are going to be doing just a wonderful dance. And I'm so excited. So let's look at the seven. Uh, and I always wonder when I, when I preach or Doc preaches, we always wonder, like, how much do you remember? So don't put, don't put my slide up yet. So when we talked about the seven words of praise, Brett and Kristen, you don't count because you're the worship leaders. Um, but I want to know what you remember. So the seven words, someone holla at your boy. What do you remember? Besides the word tehila, because for whatever reason, you guys know that one. Um, <laughs> so tehila means to sing a song of thanksgiving, right? Tehila. And you remember what we did last time? You remember what we did? Everybody together. A din dini dini din din. Tahila, a song of thanksgiving to God. Just singing a, a new song to God. Have you ever just been in worship and you're just singing to God and you and you find yourself uh, kind of like Elf? When he's like, I'm just singing a song. I can't really sing good, but I hope that this blesses you and I love you. Like, have you ever just found yourself doing that? Like, church and programs and services don't get you close to God. Spending time in the presence of God will get you closer to God. When you're just in your car or you're just alone, I'll be in my office just totally wrecked and just being like, oh man, I love you. And someone might walk by and go, man, cats and dogs in there. Who? <laughs> And I'm just praising God and I sing God a new song. And like, I would just encourage you to practice Tehillah. Be in your car and just say, God, I just want to, I just want to sing a new song to you. And whatever it is, like whatever you're thankful for to God, just, just sing it out to him. Amen. I love when that happens. And listen, I told you last week, one of the visions that God gave me is we're creating a music studio because I believe that God's going to give new songs to the people in this room for the world to hear. So we're literally making a music studio. Amen. Amen. I had the craziest thing. I had a guy come up to me. He's like, yeah, man, I want to write Christian country. <laughs> that, that blew me away. Because this is, this is what I pictured, like, I got to find dog and my wife and my everything and gave it back. And then the song went in. Like, you lose it all and get it all back. Christian country, it's coming. So, yeah. praise God, right? And I'd rather listen to someone using country music to glorify God than to key the side of their boyfriend's ride. You know what I'm saying? They're probably not watching, so sorry. All right, so let's keep going. So besides Tehillah, what's another one of the words that you remember from last week? Barak. What is it? To kneel in thanksgiving. So um, just to kneel, simply to kneel, to bow. It was so funny. I went to, uh, I was at the bank the other day, and I always um, go talk to this little lovely Filipino lady, and I'm always joking around with her because she's always talking about how people think that she's Asian when she's Filipino. And so uh, yesterday I messed with her at the bank because there's a bunch of people, and her name is Eden, and I'm like, Eden! I bowed and then I went out and everyone just looked around. But um, when you when you do Barack, you're you're kneeling, you're bowing, you're just showing God that hey, you're you're worthy. I kneel for you. I surrender to you. Amen. So you kneel, you bow. Uh, what's another one? Halal. Two. What? Halal. halal. Man, halal to you too. That's how we say it in Texas. Halal. So halal means to give thanks. By being clamorously foolish. So my mom went to a halal church, right? Anybody been to a halal church? It'll scare you. All right? They get wild for Jesus. Like, there's some halal lesson. And, and, and when we talk about worshiping God, we're not asking all of you to praise God the same way. We're just saying, hey, these are the, this is how God says we praise him. We can praise him by singing a new song of thanksgiving. We can praise him by kneeling down. We can praise him by um, to giving thanks, being foolish. And that's kind of the dancing, right? How many dancers in the room? When you just praise God with your dance or you praise God with your art or you just... Um, I always remember there's this, there's a lady uh, that my mom knew that every time anything would happen, she would start dancing, like just right on the spot. Like if God did something, she'd be like, ah! she'd just go crazy. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's excited. Like, uh, and some of you are like, 
you know, halal makes you just uncomfortable because you're like, wow, that's, that's very exciting. But it's, it's a way to praise God. Amen? I'm thankful for that. What's another one? We got three down. You can't go twice. Toda. Toda. A Thanksgiving choir, right? That's when we all sing collectively. So I, and I always try to pick songs that you all know so that we can do this together. And the kids are in the room, so here we go. Didn't know you were singing today, right? Some of you are prepping your voice. <clears throat> Jesus loves me. That that's good, that's good. <laughs> yes, keep on singing. That was really good. So, you know, when we join together and we just sing a song to God, we are literally praising God in that way. Amen? All right, we got three more. We got three more. Who remembers? And you guys are doing good because usually they say that when you hear something, you only retain about 10% of what you hear. You ever heard that? Like they did scientific studies about how much we retain and how much. But when you write something down and you hear it and you practice it, you're more likely to remember on what you heard. So let's go through the next ones. So... We got Toda, we got Barak, we got Tehillah, we got Halal, and we got Yada. To give thanks with extended hands. Just when you see people raising their hands, um, that's what you're doing. You're just giving extended hands to God. And I like how each one of these is, there's this, there's this theme of giving thanks. There's a theme of just like, thank you, Jesus. And remember, sometimes, and I said this last, last week, don't be so blinded by what you don't have, that you can't praise God for what you do have. It's, we, we live in this culture sometimes where we just are so consumed that we see what other people have. And the enemy tries to get you just to compare about to everyone else what you don't have, that you just start to be um, jealous. And God doesn't want you to be there. He wants you to be thankful for what you have. And he says things in his word like, be faithful in the little. Like, be thankful for what you do have. Amen. All right, so to give thanks with extended hands, and then there's zamar, to give thanks with the musical instruments. How many, how many uh, zamarians, if that's a word, uh, are in here? How many musical instrument people in here? Come on. Yeah, Chris uh, has a Christian hard rock band. I mean, he uses hard rock for the Lord. I don't understand what he says in all the songs, but I trust his heart that he loves Jesus, and he just, he's singing. I can't sing like him, but it's so cool that he uses that for Jesus. So, with, and, uh, so to give thanks with a musical instrument, and then Shabbat, to give thanks in a loud tone. I wanted to practice that one today. So um, we can just say, thank you, Jesus, and you can be loud. Yeah, but don't, try not to shabak in the other parts of the sermon, please. But just right now, let's do it. Let's just say thank you, Jesus, really loud. One, two, three. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. And uh, there's some, some people that practice the shabak in our service. Like I love, um, and, and lift up Hazel Shropshire today. She's not feeling well. So Hazel, we're praying for you. We're lifting you up. But her husband, I love it because he, he, he's the shabakinator. He's always just like, he always gives that. Praise God, yeah! Like, it's this person that you like, it's just inspiring, and you're like, yeah, man, yeah! And some of you, like, are kind of, like, introverted, so your Shabbat's kind of like, you get this little brief moment where you're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, like, super loud. Yeah, yeah, Hey, say it again, yeah. So to give thanks in a loud tone, and if anything, listen, I think the world needs to see a lot more of these seven things happening Monday through Saturday, All right? Like, because if you think about worship and you think about praise, could you give thanksgiving to something else? Could you give um, a song to someone else? Could you kneel for something else? Can you raise your hands for something else? When, remember, when you hear the word antichrist, that's not like just a blatant evil. That's anything in place of Jesus Christ. So um, that's why I'm so thankful f to make a place and to get resources for you guys to create something for the King of Kings. Because this world, there's so much filth and junk. Is there not? You can turn, look, my kids were playing on their, f I know. You let your kid play with the phone? Listen, not all the time. 
You be good, you get like a minute, okay? <laughs> they were playing with the phone, and I could not believe, because the game said it was, you know, it's from like three to six-year-olds. You know, it's like match which one's not a cat. And you go, oh, the monkey's not a cat. I mean, it's like a simple game like that. But I couldn't believe how filthy the ad was on a, on a little kid's game. You know what I'm talking about? Does anyone else have this feeling of like, man, us believers need to create some more stuff for the Lord so that other people can be edified and encouraged by what they're listening to and what they're watching and not feel depressed and gross when they're consuming and watching this other junk. Like, I, like this, is, and this is even crazy, like using humor for God, right? Like, I even thought about doing a Friday night. I know um, my buddy Cecil keeps telling me, like, you need to do it. I thought about doing just like a comedy night and using like a gift for the Lord because I'd rather have people have some clean humor that would glorify Jesus than listen to some trash and filth on Netflix that doesn't edify your soul. Like when we get together, we're to encourage each other and bring edification to each other and point to Jesus, like pointing to the cross. Amen? Amen. And so what's cool is there's one verse particularly that actually has four of these seven in one verse. And I absolutely love it. Psalms 100 verse 4. It says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, Toda, and into his courts with praise, Tehillah. Be thankful, Yada, to him and bless Barak, his name. And when you kind of, when you substitute what the meanings are, check this out. It's so beautiful. So when you come in to praise, when we start our service with praise and worship, listen to this verse. Enter into his gates with, with a thanksgiving choir. Enter into his courts with singing praises. Be thankful by extending your hands to him and bless him by bowing before his name. Yay. Isn't that so beautiful? Wow. When you come in thinking about Psalms 100 verse 4 and just going after it. Amen? Amen. So that's kind of a recap of seven words in Hebrew that praise God in the Old Testament. Amen. But today, as you see, I want to talk about sacrifice and I want to talk about altars. And I want you to turn to Romans chapter 12. That's where we're going to spend a little bit of our time before we bring up some, some dancing. Amen. All right, when you get there, give me some halal. <laughs> Actually, well, we might get more. Um, never mind. <laughs> when you're there, just clap your hands twice, I guess. Clap on. Clap on. Actually, let's do this. Well done, good and faithful son. You're the only one. Okay. Romans chapter 12. So we're going to talk about sacrifice and I'm going to talk about altars. When you hear the word altar, it's, I don't want you to, like, I'm going to break down some of these words because sometimes it gets lost in the Christianese of how we present things. When you say altar, uh, we had Pat Hankins over there. He, he did a, a beautiful job talking about altars. And altars can be a place of like, like a, a memorial, a memorial where God, like you guys have altars in your life where you think about, man, this is when God brought me through this hard time. Some of you are like, this is when God brought me through a nasty divorce. This is when God brought me through addiction in my life. This is where God brought me through whatever the situation is. And you, you, you remember you have the altar. The first one you see is I think Genesis 8, chapter, 20, or, uh, chapter 8, verse 20, Noah built uh, an altar. But they it would have little stones and they'd be a memorial. But it's also a place to sacrifice. And when you see the cross, that's the biggest picture of an altar that we have. Because that was where the Son of God, the Lamb who was slain for our sins, sacrificed for you and me. Amen? And that is all that matters is Jesus Christ and him crucified and what he has done on that altar. And then also in the church, we say that the front of the stage, right, is an altar. And what I always think about is like, if Jesus laid that down on that altar, then what can I lay down at this altar? Because some of you have some things that you're dealing with that you just need to sacrifice it before the Lord. And that's why I love this portion of scripture in Romans chapter 12. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you might prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, I just thought about sacrifice, and I thought about how, like, church in America is like, yeah, I'll give you, like, an hour and a half, God. But at the same time, like, this, this might just shock some of you. This, this shocked me because I asked myself the hard questions. Have you ever asked yourself the hard question? Like, the hard question is, like, if God is saying, hey, I want you to present your body as, like, a living sacrifice, if I'm asking you to never cease your, your worship mindset or your prayer mindset, the question becomes, man, do we really love God as much as we think we do? And I think we have to go there sometimes because can you think that maybe you love him more than you do? And then you read those really hard scriptures that just talk about like, man, if I really love God, is there something in here that is completely not God? And I think it's a beautiful thing because listen, you guys know my heart. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. But at the same time, I think my brother Robert posted a scripture today. It's one of those doozies that said, how can someone say that they have God in their life and love him, but have hate for like a brother or a sister? Amen. Like you, and it's so hard to hear. Thank the Lord I'm funny for times like this. You can't say that you love God if you hate your brother. Like it's a tough thing to like see, but like, like I said, condemnation is bad. Conviction by the Holy Spirit that leads to repentance is good. Amen. Amen. And I was talking to even my brother today, like I'm not the pastor of the church because I'm the smartest, like straight A student. And I passed, uh, I'm a doctor. I'm not a doctor. That's a doctor. You see, I'm a doctor. That better is a doctor. And that always, it all trips me up too. When you can get a doctorate in something that's not as helpful. Like, I just don't want to be on the plane. We need a doctor. Huh, I'm a doctor like in biblical studies. <laughs> well, if he dies, I can pray for resurrection. Amen. You know what I mean? Like when people are like, you know, I'm a, I'm a doctor in, uh, I don't know, pick a subject. <laughs> and then you're like, uh, not that kind of doctor. But um, I'm not the pastor because I'm that. I, I'm the pa I believe God's called me to be a pastor because I love people. And I want to walk with people in their faith journey. I want to be available when you're just, struggling. You're like, man, I just need some encouragement today. I just need some edification today. And we're training up people within the church to walk with you on your faith journey. Life has its issues, does it not? Yeah. Does, and, and what I love about the body of Christ is, aren't you so thankful when your mind starts to go to an unhealthy place and you start to go, why is this happening to me? Blah, 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 blah. Aren't you so thankful for people in your life that'll be like, stop it, man. Come on. And they encourage you and they bring you to a better, a healthy mindset and a healthy place. Amen. Like, man, I moved to Texas without any family here. And I remember meeting just people that had the love of Christ within their heart. And that would just, when I didn't have anything, just having strangers kind of come to your need. And, and like, I remember being so sick. And uh, I was just, I was at the apartments actually right across the street. And I remember I felt like I was like near death and I was so sick and I didn't have any family here. And Sarah wasn't moved here yet. Sarah was still in Spokane. I just, I got really sick for whatever reason. And uh, this is like 12 years ago. And I just said, Sarah, I, I'm coming home. Like I knew God told me to come here, but I'm like, I'm coming home. I'm so sick. No one's taking care of me. I want my mom. And uh, I got my mom to move here, by the way. So there is a happy ending. Um, but I just remember being so sick. And I remember Dr. Tindy and, uh, and Dr. Ledbetter and this guy named Philip. They came and rescued me right when I was like, church is so hypocritical. No one's here for me. Uh, uh. Anybody ever, ever been in that place? Come on. Some of you, some of you went, um, some of you went full Barack, <laughs> right? And uh, these three men who, who didn't really even know me came and helped take care of me. They helped me renew my mind because you know what? The biggest indicator that shows that you love God is the way that you're treating each other. Like God says, they're gonna know that we love Jesus based on how we love each other. It's a pretty big deal, amen? And so when, you say, when, when we say sacrifice and we say altar, like 
the thing we have to ask ourselves, like, are we really sacrificing what God tells us to sacrifice? Because listen, it is so easy in today's age to be so busy, busy bees. It's so easy to go, sorry, God, I can't give you this time because I have this. God, I can't, I can't, I can't do this because I have this. It's just so easy to get so busy. And what I was telling Doc and when we were praying in the office this morning is it's just like, yes, we, we always make these things. That, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I can't do that. I can't do that. And I'm like, did God not say like, do a bunch of stuff in the six days and like rest on the seventh day? <laughs> like Sarah and I had a conversation before about, you know, be so crazy. And, and this blows our mind is having church six days a week together and then taking a day off. People go, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, I just thought about like with God, there's no such thing as being too radical, like, and giving him too much. Amen. Like the more that we can really like, just, just love God and and just listen, discipleship, discipleship doesn't as much happen like in here on a Sunday. Discipleship happens when I, when, I, when I say, hey, I want you to start teaching me and walking me through this because I want to know Jesus more. Like that's when most of the discipleship happens because we preach whatever we feel God is saying to us in this season for who's coming. But if you want discipleship, that takes daily like, I love when people are texting me and they say, hey, what's this about in this scripture? Or, hey, I'm dealing with this. I need a verse. Or, hey, man, I just want to get together and have some worship. Like, that's when the discipleship, that's when the growth truly happens is when we deny ourselves and say, man, teach me. Walk me through that. And some of you, like, God is, is, is raising you up and he's saying, it's time. Come on. Let's start teaching people. Let's start walking people through the Bible, right, man? And we have to say yes and be obedient. And so today, all I want you to simply think about when you hear altar and you hear sacrifice, even you kids, if there is something that's burning you down, if there's something that you've put in place of Jesus, and listen, I'll tell you, like electronics have become like such an idol for people that like, and it's crazy because you know that little thing on your phone that pops up? The one that punches you right in the face and says, here's how much time you're on me today. <laughs> Anybody here see that on the iPhone? I thought about buying a Samsung just because I don't want to be reminded. No, I'm just playing. But it's become an idol, right? We spend so much time on stuff that doesn't matter. And the encouragement is, man, let's edify each other and let's use our gifts for God so that we, we flip it. Like... If Jesus showed you once a day, here's how much time you spent with me, where would we find ourselves? Would you get that little notification that said, you finally opened me. You finally spent time with me today. I just think that it's not a condemning message. I want to encourage you to spend more time with Jesus because the more time you spend with Jesus, the more like the more that you look like Jesus and the more that you can be his ambassador and share about him. Amen. Like that's all I'm trying to do today is to just to get us to realize like how much time am I really spending with God and what does that time with God really look like? It's not just an hour and a half today. Like spending time with God is getting with your family and just saying, hey, let's dive into the scripture or by yourself or asking a friend doing a Bible study, getting together, worshiping, studying. Like, I love when you guys invite me to your individual homes and you're like, hey, we're just having some worship tonight. We're just going to study the Bible tonight. I'm like, yeah. I turn into the, I'm like, I'm bringing the tequila. Hear what I heard? Just making sure you're paying attention. I'm bringing the law. I'm going, man. I'm here. I'm going to praise God. And I just think there's something special when we take time and just know that I keep seeing this vision as your pastor that, that, that people are coming way before church starts so that they can be ministered to. I see this vision of people creating all kinds of music and artwork out of here. And it's all about this right here. Like it's all about Jesus and it's all about the cross. And as you notice, I did put the baptism out today because after, even after service, like if you've never been baptized, if you're saying, man, I get it the sacrifice, the altar. Do you know we were all born as sinners? Like not one of you was born righteous. We were all born sinners. And that's, that's why you need to be born again. Because you, you want to be born into the family of Christ. And we, we set this up. Um, I try to set up as much as we can because 
It's just beautiful. It's beautiful when you want someone to be born again and be baptized and be washed of all the, the junk of this world and be baptized into Christ. And so if that's you today, just know that we're right here. And uh, we are going to end service by a couple things. I'm going to introduce this, this, this dance. Then we're going to worship and respond to the word a little bit. And then um, at the very end, we're going to have another dance. So I think we're ready. Are we ready? All righty. Come take this away. And... Um, by the way, um, dance, I'm going to do a plug. If you are a dancer before and you want to use your gift of dancing for God, uh, Pastor Judy has dance every Monday night and they worship God with dance. And listen, some of the kids too, like my daughter, here's what's crazy. My daughter, I was teaching hip hop for 12 years, right? Some of you are like, prove it. I know, like my new people, prove it. But I, I, I taught dance for 12 years and I tried to get my daughter into dance and she wasn't having it. And then when Judy's like, hey, you want to dance for Jesus? Like my daughter is so excited today to do this dance. And I know all these girls and, and, and the adults, they've poured so much time and energy into this. So, but I, I know their heart. Their heart is not that you just watch me, watch me. Their heart is that you would see this dance and you'd worship the King of Kings with them. Amen? Amen. All right, let's give it up. was rich I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I
Amen. Amen. That was awesome. Man. Now, I always wonder what it was like because uh, my kids are getting to the age where they're like finally into stuff. So I finally had that like proud dad moment where you're just like, oh my gosh. And, and that it's for Jesus. Gosh, is there anything greater than your kid like just love Jesus through dance or whatever? And uh, let me just, and I know Lila wouldn't care about this, but one of the beautiful things I just saw before we get into worship and as the worship team comes on is I, rem- I want to tell you just this thing about Lila. You try so hard as a parent, don't we, to just like teach your kids about Jesus and loving Jesus and sharing Jesus and just being radical for Jesus. Don't we spend so much time just trying to, you know, and then, and then sometimes we get frustrated because we see moments where you're like, that ain't Jesus. I don't know what that was, but there's these moments that you have, and my wife had one of them. Uh, well, it's kind of like a two for one. The bad news is that they weren't sleeping like we just told them to do an hour ago. But what was beautiful is my daughter got this little prayer devotional thing, and she was reading it to Jackson and to JJ. And it was like the most beautiful thing of like, as a parent of, of like, and the same is true with God the Father. Like, I think there's times where he sees us do something and he's just like, you know, like people get this confused all the time and I have to bring light to it. God hates sin. God does not hate you. You sin, but God doesn't hate you. God hates the sin. And there's this, con- and what happens is what the devil tries to get you to believe is that you are your sin right? And it's just not true. You are not your sin. You are a child of God. And what people out there believe is that I have to get everything in my life perfect before God can love me. And that's not true. God says, come as you are. And he is the one that molds the clay. He is the one that as you get closer to him, you just are changed from the inside out and your wants will be different. Everything about you will be different if you just simply give it up for Jesus and let him do what only he can do. Hear me, only what he can do not a person. If you're trying to please people, then you've missed it anyway, but only what Jesus can do through his spirit to change us. So I'm going to invite you to stand up and we are going to worship the King of Kings. If you need prayer right now in this moment, if you are struggling, we're going to have a prayer partner in each one of these four corners of the room. We're going to have someone here that can pray with you. If you don't know who Jesus is, you're like, I just want more information about Jesus, then we're going to be here for you. So right now, if you need anything, please come see one of our prayer partners so we can pray with you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are. You're worthy to be praised. You are the creator of the universe. You are the intelligent designer. God, you don't mess up. And God, you created us in your image and we messed up, but you still sent your son to die on the cross to redeem us back to you, God. And we believe that with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul. Thank you, Jesus, for who you are, what you've done. Thank you for your Holy Spirit in this place right now. And we just thank you that you're going to do what only you can do in Jesus name. Amen.
deserve it all, Jesus. You deserve it all, Jesus. Open up my heart to you. I open up my heart to you now. So do what only you can do. Come on, does anybody need a move from God this morning? Something that you can't do without Him. Come on, open your heart to Him today. He can do anything. He can part the sea. He can do something in your life this morning. He can do anything. Shine upon you, be gracious. 
When he says to do something, you got to do it. I just feel like I got a word for somebody. We sang, he is for you, he is for you, he is for you. You know, but the question becomes, are we for him? Like, are we for him? But I feel like the word that God gave me is someone just keeps thinking that they're not worthy. They're not this. They have no hope. They're born a certain way. They, like, stop it. Your hope is in Jesus. Jesus can do anything. And some of you limit yourself because you, you don't have any hope. Jesus is our hope. The cross makes a addition symbol, not a subtraction symbol. Like, he can do what you can't. You understand? Like, stop limiting yourself. Some of you just, you're, you, you are called to do so much, but your mind is what blocks you. You're your own worst enemy. And I think the Lord's just saying, like, I want to show you what I can do. I want to show you through my spirit how to take those thoughts captive and to walk in what I've called you to do. So if that's you, I mean, it's an encouraging message that stop letting your mind block you from him and what he has for you. Like he is for you. Like get that in the deepest part of your soul. He is for you. Amen. Gosh, if you know me, I just want to beat up a demon or two that are just trying to block you from what you're called to do. Like, man, like I just think about when 12 people just faithfully said like, Lord, I do. It changed history. Think about if 100 people said, I do. And what could happen in, in our city, right? In our neighborhoods. When, you, when we stop, I just see this thing happening that the world keeps trying to push you into a box because you say you're a believer and they try to push these narratives that are not true about the church and about who Jesus is and it's like we got to be not ashamed of Jesus we have to bring that hope into the world and not be ashamed of what Jesus says even the tough verses even the tough scriptures even the tough things to be about Jesus amen, amen. but uh I want to end on this. I'm going to have, as the, the worship team dissipates, <laughs> there's no other word. Um, we're going to bring our other worship team out again. Our, amen. That's what they are. It's our other worship team. And uh, this, this next dance they're doing is kind of, um, it's a fun thing. So listen, um, I want to encourage all of you to have a little fun. Um, as my brother Warren say, I'm going to tell all the white people to please clap on beat, okay? If you don't know how to clap on beat, just find a brother or somebody to help you out, okay? We're here to guide you, okay? We can all overcome that, all right? So um, have fun. This is more of a praise type song as we end service today, so I want you to be excited with them. So um, without further ado, here we go. Dancers of Grace.
decir que hasta hoy no cantas abandonado Sé que de mí siempre has estado Cuando me han faltado fuerza Y la carga en mis espaldas no he podido más No has venido a rescatarme en mi debilidad Has sufrido a cada mi necesidad Gracias Señor por darme todo Por darme vida y darme gozo Let's have auditions now for the adults. Um, what I love about Christ is that he transcends your heritage or your culture. It brings us all together. We, we praise him with art. We praise him with dancing. We praise him in English. We praise him in Spanish. Amen. We just praise God. Amen. Amen. Would you stand on your feet and let me bless you on your way out? And uh, don't forget tonight is night number three. If you want to bless people by hand out cocoa or you want to volunteer, just come tonight. Meet us in the life room at 515, 530, and we will send you out to um, help the community. So, Father God, we just pray uh, the song, The Blessing. Lord, straight from your word in numbers, I thank you that, uh, Lord, you bless the people as they go. Shine your face upon them. Give them peace. But, Lord, even so, let them leave here and give the world hope that's only found in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for each one of our testimonies. But, Lord, you are the ultimate testimony. And let, us, let our lives and our words reflect your testimony and give people hope. Thank you, Jesus. Bless these families as they go. And bless tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon.